Welcome to session 5 of Versa Essentials Software Defined Security. In this session, we'll discuss access lists, the difference between stateless and stateful firewalls, next generation firewall capabilities, and unified threat management. We'll begin by discussing how access lists work. Access lists are used to filter network traffic that crosses a routing or security device. They're used when an administrator wants to control access on the local router. The access list is applied to an interface and permits or blocks traffic across that interface. In our example, Alice has a computer with IP address 192.168.1.1 and she wants to communicate with Bob, whose computer has IP address 1.1.1.1. In order to permit this, a router uses an access list which provides rules regarding what traffic is permitted to cross the router. The access list can be applied as an inbound or an outbound access list. The direction of the access list is from the perspective of the router. In our example, an access list is applied to the router on the interface that connects to Alice. Traffic from Alice to Bob is entering the interface and matches the source address of 192.168.1.1 and the destination address of 1.1.1.1. The action of the rule is to permit the traffic. This allows Alice to initiate communication with Bob. However, the return traffic from Bob must also be permitted. This requires another rule within the access list which matches traffic from host 1.1.1.1 destined to host 192.168.1.1 and permits it. Because the access list is still applied to the interface facing Alice, the direction of the traffic is outbound because it is leaving the interface on the router. This configuration also allows Bob to initiate a session with Alice, which may not be desired. A common scenario is when user Alice is required to access any application on the internet. To enable this behavior, a rule can be created that matches Alice's source address and any destination address and permits the traffic. The return rule would also have to allow any internet traffic to connect to Alice's IP address, which can be a major security issue. Access lists are stateless. Next, we'll look at how a firewall functions. Stateful firewall rules work differently from access lists. Let's look at our previous example. A stateful firewall rule has been created that allows Alice with host address 192.168.1.1 to communicate with destination address 1.1.1.1. When Alice initiates a session with Bob, the stateful firewall permits the traffic, like with an access list. However, the firewall is aware that traffic from Bob must be permitted back to the 192.168.1.1 address. A session table is created in the firewall that permits address 1.1.1.1 to return traffic to 192.168.1.1 as long as the session was initiated by 192.168.1.1. A session is normally defined as a five-tuple match, which includes the source IP, destination IP, source port, destination port, and protocol number. This information is stored in the session table. With this rule, if Bob wants to initiate a session with Alice, the incoming traffic is compared to the session table on the firewall. If Bob's communication is not part of an existing session, the traffic is dropped. In other words, Alice can initiate communications with Bob, but Bob cannot initiate communications with Alice. Stateful firewall rules aren't applied to an interface. Instead, security zones are defined, which may include one or more interfaces. Traffic that must pass from one zone to another must pass through the security policy rules. In the example, two zones are present. One zone, the LAN zone, is internal to the network. The other zone, the Internet zone, is inherently less secure. The rule allows Alice to communicate with any resource on the Internet, but does not allow any device on the Internet zone to initiate a connection to Alice's workstation. This system makes Alice's computer more secure against outside threats when accessing the Internet. Rules can be more specific. For example, the rule can contain other parameters which identify the source and destination zone, as well as protocol types and port numbers. 
Next, we'll discuss next generation firewall rules. Next generation firewall rules allow the inclusion of applications or application groups in the match criteria for the security rules. This requires processes that can perform deep packet inspection on transit traffic in order to identify application types and embedded applications within a data packet. Another feature of a next generation firewall is illustrated in Rule 5. The rule permits user Alice to access the internet. However, the rule does not include the IP address of Alice's workstation. This can be enabled by configuring the firewall to authenticate the user through Microsoft Active Directory. In this way, even if Alice connects to the network through Wi-Fi, a different workstation, or through a different office, the security rules can be applied to her even if her IP address changes. In a similar manner, rules can be applied to groups of users. Unified Threat Management, or UTM, is another level of security that can be applied to the network. Examples are content filtering and malware protection. This includes a deeper level of inspection of traffic. In the example, Rule 7 permits LAN zone traffic to the Internet, but requires that the traffic be inspected for known malware by the IDS IPS module. Rule 8 permits email traffic from the sales group, but requires that it be inspected as well. This slide shows a feature comparison between stateful firewalls, next generation firewalls, and UTM firewalls. With stateful firewalls, the key component is the stateful firewall policies. They also implement denial of service protection. A denial of service attack is a network attack that is designed to use up the resources of a computer or a network service and make it unavailable to legitimate end users. Application level gateways permit the stateful firewall to permit applications to connect when they use different port numbers. For example, when an FTP session is established, the initiating device requests a data channel from the remote device that uses a different port. The stateful firewall must be able to recognize this application process and allow the traffic for both ports in both directions. Stateful firewalls are capable of site-to-site -site IPsec tunnels and may have visibility into applications if they have a deep packet inspection engine. Next generation firewalls add the following capabilities. Application control. Applications can be controlled based not just on application names, but application groups and categories. URL reputation and filtering. IP reputation and filtering. Reputation filtering provides protection against known bad entities, whether they be URLs or IP addresses. Security threats such as web exploits, Windows exploits, phishing attempts, botnets, spam sources, and so forth can be filtered based on URL or IP reputation ratings. DNS reputation and filtering. User and group access control for policies based on user identity and group memberships. Device identification and control allows devices to be identified based on device type and operating system. TLS inspection. Unified Threat Management, or UTM firewalls, provide file and reputation filtering by using deep scanning capabilities. These capabilities also provide IDP and IPS functions, antivirus scanning, TLS decryption, and remote access VPN capabilities. This is the end of Session 5 of the Versa Essentials series. In this session, we discussed access lists, the difference between stateless and stateful firewalls, next generation firewall capabilities, and unified threat management. Thank you for your participation in this session, and we hope you found the session informative. In the next session, we'll discuss WAN implementations,